the lay of the children of Húrin. Durin, son of Húrin, and Glorund, the dragon. Lo, the golden dragon of the god of hell, the gloom of the words of the world now gone, the woes of men and weeping of elves, fading faintly down forest pathways, is now to tell, and the name most tearful of Niniel the sorrowful, and the name most sad of Thalion's son Túrin, o'erthrown by fate. Lo, Húrin, Thalion, in the hosts of war was whelmed, what time the white-clad armies of Elfiness were all to ruin by the dread hay driven of Delumorgoth. That field is yet by the folk named Ninith Unothradin, unnumbered tears. There the children of men, chieftain and warrior, fled and fought not, but the folks of the elves they betrayed with treason, save the true man only, Thalion Erithamrod, and his thanes like gods. There in host, on host, the hill-fiend orcs overbore him at last, in that battle terrible, by the bidding of Bauglir, bound him living, and pulled down the prouders of the princes of men. To Bauglir's halls in the hills build it, to the hells of iron, and the hidden caverns they hailed the hero of Hithlum's land, Thalion Nerithamrod, to their throned lord, whose breast was burned with a bitter hatred, and wroth he was, that the wreck of war had not taken Turgon ten times a king, even Finweg's heir, nor Feanor's children, makers of the magic and immortal gems. For Turgon, towering in terrible anger, a path they clove him with his pale sword blade out of that slaughter. Ye, his swath was plain through the host of hell like hay that lieth all low on the lee, where the long scythe goes. A countless company that king did lead through the darkened dales and drear mountains out of ken of his foes, and he comes not more in the tale. But the triumph he turned to doubt of Morgoth the evil, who mad wrath took. Nor spies pet him, nor spirits of evil, nor his wealth of wisdom to win him tidings, whither the nation of the gnomes was gone. Now a thought of malice, when Thalion stood bound and bending in his black dungeon, then moved in his mind, that remembered well how men were accounted all mightless and frail by the elves and their kindred. How only treason could master the magic whose maze is wrapped to the children of Corthun, and cheated his purpose. It is dauntless, Hurin, quoth Delu Morgoth. Stout steel handed who stands before me, a captive living as a coward might be. Now as thou my name, or needst be told what hope he has, who is hailed to Angband, the bale most bitter, the Balrog's torment. I know, and I hate, for that knowledge I fought thee by fear and fettered, nor fear I now, said Thalion there, and a thane of Morgoth on the mouth smote him, but Morgoth smiled. Fear when thou feelest, and the flames lick thee, and the whips of the Balrogs thy white flesh brand. Yet away canst win as thou wishest, still to lessen thy lots of lingering woe. Go question the captives of the accursed people I have taken, and tell me where Turgon is hid. How with fire and death I may find him soon, where he lurketh lost in lands forgot. Thou must feign thee a friend faithful in anguish, and their inmost hearts thus open and search. Then, if truth thou tellest, thy tribal bonds I will bid men unbind, that abroad thou fare in my service to search the secret places following the footsteps of these foes of the gods. Build not thy hopes so high, O Bauglir, I am no tool for thy evil treasons. Torment were sweeter than traitor's stain. If torment be sweet, treasure is lever. 
the hordes of a hundred hundred ages, the gems and jewels of the jealous gods are mine, and a mead shall I mead thee thence. Ye wealth to glut the worm of greed, canst not learn of thy law. When thou lookedst on a foe, O Bauglir unblessed, bray no longer of the things thou hast thieved from the three kindreds. In hate I hold thee, and thy hests in scorn, boldly thou bravest me. Be thy boast rewarded, in mirth, quote Morgoth, to me now the deeds, and thy aid I ask not. But anger thee naught, if little they like thee, ye look thereon helpless to hinder, or thy hand to raise. Then Thalion was thrust to Thangorodrim, that mountain that meets the misty skies, on high o'er the hills that Hithlum sees, blackly brooding on the borders of the north. To a stool of stone on its steepest peak they bound him in bonds and unbreakable chain, and the Lord of Woe there laughing stood, then cursed him forever, and his skin and seed with the doom of dread of death and horror. There the mighty man unmoved sat, but unveiled with his vision, that he viewed afar all earthly things with eyes enchanted, that fell on his folk a fiend's a torment.